Our legends are hope that you're all doing really well. Now, today we're going to talk about that Putin and both Prigozhin have made statements talking about the sort of armed insurgency that was on its way to Moscow from Wagner PMC and how this has gone. Also, some statements from Zelensky, some new weapons going to Ukraine. And of course, we're going to have a look over the maps and see what's going on. Now, quick plug first, come and join the Telegram. It's it a bit wild, but I think there's a good mix of different opinions and people collecting different information to put through from there, as well as you, YouTube just hate me as per usual. So I'm restricted again for some reason, but if you'd like to support me, there's always links down below. But let's, of course, have a look at the maps and see what is going on from here. So, of course, we're going to look at the MOD update first. Now, as part of its broader counteroffensive, Ukraine has gained impetus in its assaults around Bakhmut in the Donetsk Oblast. Now, of course, impetus means the force of a body moving. In a multi-brigade operation, Ukrainian forces have made progress on both the northern and southern flanks of the town. We're going to look at where that is. There's been little evidence that Russia maintained any significant ground forces, operational level reserves, which could be used to reinforce against the multiple threats it is now facing in widely separated sectors from Bakhmut to the eastern bank of the Dnieper River, only 200 kilometers away. Now, what I ask about this, is this saying that significant ground forces reserves for offensive operations, defensive operations, what are we actually talking here? Because if we're talking in and around Bakhmut on the ISW, let's have a look here, that the operational reserve forces are still well back from Bakhmut. This is where the reserve forces are in these built-up um, defensive positions. So I just think that is interesting, but we'll talk about that further on. Now, we know Ukraine has said there has been some major changes today. So Zelensky took Twitter to say this. Today, our warriors have advanced in all directions in a few-minute video talking there, as well as... And this is a happy day being the next thing he said about moving in directions that they're very happy about this. So, of course, let's have a look at the map. Of course, we've got Ukraine, the center of the capital of Kiev, red areas, areas occupied since 22, and the purple since 14. I've got Romania, Poland, Belarus, and Russia around here. Now, Belarus should have a little Prigozhin symbol as that's where he is off to, but we'll talk more about that in the future. So, let's have a look at where we saw these southwestern pushes in and around to the south of Orokiv. So, let's roll back a couple of days and have a look. And what we have seen is that Ukraine has made a little bit more ground to the south towards Robertini, but nothing too major over the last couple of days. There's been some more slow and steady push down towards there, but we do know in and around this region that they are pushing further and further in and around these defensive positions here. So this is Robertini and pushing this way. Now, the ISW is showing this picture here of the map, and then let's compare this to last week. And let's see. So, to my eye, no major shifts have really been seen on the map. All we see is this tiny shift in here that is showing a southern push, but this is to a minor degree. So, definitely showing a little bit different from what then other deep state is showing. So, the news of the day, the big news of the day, is that Rivnopol in here has come under control of the Ukrainian armed force. So, where we see that push down from here and a major shift of the ground here. Let's see if the ISW also shows this. Yes, it does. So, Rivnopol is in here. So, that is really the major news as that has been then taken. So, let's have a look at the ISW from last week. If I can move it across and zoom out. Here we go. So, we see in here this Levadani that is basically saying it's pushed across here. So showing a lot more ground. So Rivnopol sits just in here and Levadani's here. So it's pushing down across here. So that is a major change in that region. As we know, there's been fighting over three, four weeks, pushing slowly through this region and, you know, grinding down towards these Russian defensive lines here in an attempt to break through and then push down to the south from here. So we have seen major fighting in and around here, as well as major defensive works as far as then the huge minefields would have been a huge problem for the armor moving through here. So let's have a look at this compared to then the Rybar Russian sources. Now, what does Rybar actually say? In the northern ledge, Ukrainian formations were able to occupy Rivnopol after occupying the settlement. The enemy advanced somewhat towards Perutani. In addition, our forces moved to these regions. Now, these other regions here, I can't see on any other map as it is in the north eastern corner near Sumi here. So, let's we'll talk about that maybe further down the line. But, let's then have a look then at the map here. And this is showing then Rivnopol here. 
And I think it is showing fairly similar. So you have Makarivka, Makarivka, but what one thing it is showing, this is what it does tend to show more on the rubber of other areas too, is that it pushes in more and sort of comes in and goes up again. So it is showing that there is more uh, of a northeastern um, control area by the Russians up around here, but these maps don't show the waterways or roads very well. It only shows some major stuff. So it is bloody difficult to line up where is actually what, but what it is showing on here is these arrows in this Protozini in here. So, as it did say, that Ukraine is pushing from Levanny and Rivnopol into these regions here. What isn't really being shown on the other maps, as they don't really show movements, but we do know that um, the Ryba has shown a lot of Ukrainian movements in around these areas and does show somewhat significantly more in some regions than, than these maps show. So let's just have a look at this Uruzani in here. So zoom in, Uruzani. So it's saying that they are on the south side of Uruzani or on the south eastern side, which these maps are not showing. So this is why we can pair the two and go from there. So we don't see many other movements up the front line really at all. But then let's go into Bakhmut and see what is showing that there's change. So what we do see between the 24th and the 25th, we do see that more is gained on the southern and northern flank. So firstly, on the northern flank, there is just a slight move in and around here, mainly a change in the grey zone, pushing to the east into Bakhmut. Now, on the south, this we do see some major changes. We do see that Ukraine has pushed up to where this waterway then goes down through here. So we do know that there was more up in this region. Russia pushed across and Ukraine pushed back. And what we do see now is Ukraine do push back along this waterway. Now, is this being then shown on the ISW? Yes, it is down in and around this region. So let's have a look at this. We compare the ISW to ISW. So from last week, where we do see is a lot of it hasn't changed in the north, really no change in the south. We do see that more blue, of course, being a Ukrainian held territory, has increased down around this region. But as we do know, here are the defensive works. That's still a fair way from those major works, but there is ground being made in and around there. And we got this video of Ukrainian forces after they had captured Rivnopol in here as well. So there is ground being made. The maps are moving, but it's nothing huge or significant all in as it goes. So as well, Australia has then put another 75 million US dollars, about 100, 110 million Australian dollar dues into Ukraine. And of course, unlike Oryx, has put the photograph upside down because the land down under, another side of the bloody world, but 28 M113 AS4 APCs. So the M113, the AS4 variant is we had the original M113s in Vietnam, basically cut two in half, add an extra road wheel and put them back together. I was mechanized infantry. That is exactly what I worked with was those vehicles. They are well outdated and really outdated in Vietnam as well and are being replaced by new vehicles basically at the moment. So there's probably hundreds of those around the country which have not been deployable for our forces for a long time and we'll be looking to offload those. 14 special operations vehicles, I'm not really sure what they mean specifically by this but as well, 28 man trucks, these are a medium sized truck with the trailer so these are a very new truck that have come into the Australian forces then get, they replaced then the Unimog so they are getting sent to Ukraine and as well as 105mm artillery shells and well there are a few other little bits and pieces to go with that and it said that America is going to sign another $500 million deal tomorrow of more Bradleys, Strikers and a lot of ammunition as well. So Prigozhin, this mutiny coup, whatever the hell it was, CIA op, however you see this and people are very divisive on exactly what this was. So Prigozhin did release an 11 minute audio message discussing what had happened here and we also have Putin and we'll watch the Putin video, but the audio message from Pogosian, some of the bits pulled out was, despite the fact that we did not show any aggression, a missile attack was launched on us. 30 fighters were killed and others were injured. So this comes from the other day where we saw Pogosian filming walking around one of the said to be Wagner camps saying that the Russian forces then attacked them and then they went back in, as we know, over the past 48 hours. This served as a trigger for our immediate advance. One of the columns went to Rostov, the other towards Moscow. Was not a single soldier killed on the ground? We regret that we had to strike at aircraft, but they striked us with bombs. And there is a lot of footage coming out. Can't show it here. YouTube already had me enough. But footage coming out of Wagner convoys being hit from the Russian aerospace forces. We travelled 780 kilometres. This was 200 kilometres from Moscow. And we blocked all military bases 
police and airfields along the way. Among the PMC fighters, there were several wounded and two dead. Amongst them, employees of the Ministry of Defence that decided to join our cause. None of the PMC fighters were forced to march, and everyone knew he's got. Our march showed serious security problems across our country, but it was never our goal to overthrow the current regime and legally elected government. So he does say it was never their goal to overthrow Putin, but did show serious security concerns. And we know that Prokhorin really hates Shogu and the way this special military operation war has gone. And we sort of all believe that his main goal of this was to get him and Gurusimov then out of Pelavrov. The Minister of Foreign Affairs had to say about this. He was asked if the rebellion of the Wagner PMC will create difficulty for foreign partners. His partners and friends, no. So, of course, allies of Russia. Everyone else, they don't care, to be honest. Talks about, of course, the West. They've been destroyed by its own initiative and there are no relations. And Lavrov has also talked about if Western spy agencies were involved and that internal security intelligence groups from Russia will be looking into if the West had any involvement on this happening. And of course, the West has said that they have had no involvement on that. Interesting, though, Wagner will not be withdrawn from Africa, that their operations there will still continue to go. So Wagner is definitely not being completely disbanded. We don't know what the actual fallout and where this will go from here. So we really don't know what is next, what the fallout will be, what's next for Prokhorin and Wagner. Wagner in Ukraine, we really don't know, but we know that Wagner isn't over and that they will still participate in operations in Africa too. So Putin has addressed his leaders and the country as well and talked in length. And this is just a clip from that too. So here he talks about that. Any blackmail attempt or correct internal unrest is then doomed to fail. Really talking about Wagner creating that internal unrest. So he says, I would like to emphasize that from the very beginning of the events, all necessary decisions were immediately taken to neutralize the threat that arose to protect the constitutional order the lives and safety of our citizens now what we do know is that wagner group from the photos from the videos was really given like a very warm welcome into these areas that people seem to really like wagner group and pushing back against this and like the meme i shared of the western media couldn't figure out if wagner are heroes or terrorists what from there and it would actually be interesting to know in a completely democratic environment how popular Prigozhin and Putin really are and I think there is definitely a growing like towards Prigozhin so an armed rebellion would have been suppressed anyway so if Wagner really did do an armed rebellion when they didn't sign any agreements and peace deals to then pull out that they would have been suppressed anyway by the Russian forces so the insurgents of course referring the insurgents referring to Wagner group despite their loss of adequacy could not help but see could not help but see that if they did continue to push then they would have been neutralized from there they understood everything including that they had committed crimes that they have divided and weakened the country that now faced a huge external threat we are facing unprecedented pressure from the outside when our comrades are dying on the front lines with the words take a step back so of course talking in here about that they have made a whole nother problem and made then russia look weak as well the insurgents having betrayed their country their people betrayed those they had dragged into crime lied to them pushed them to death and firing line to shoot their own and the in kiev and the western patrons and all kinds of national traders wanted so he's saying here that they wanted this they wanted russia to raise up against each other and in fight and a lot of people have said this the easiest way to get, then get russia to pull back is to create civil unrest and divide russia up and i had a lot of people going hey this is what we were waiting for they wanted russian soldiers to kill each other to kill military personnel and civilians so that russia would ultimately lose and our society would be divided drowned in a bloody internal conflict they lost their hands dreaming of the revenge for their failures at the front of this so-called counter offensive but it was miscalculated thanks to our 
military law enforcement special service who stood in the way of the rebels. Burton also gives a tribute in this to the pilots that were killed in the aircraft shot down by Wagner as well. As well then Putin gives the opportunity for Wagner troops to come and join then the MOD and law enforcement agencies from there and that anyone who wants to go to Belarus these promises will be fulfilled and the choice is between theirs of where they actually go. And then he thanks Lukashenko of course the leader of Belarus as well for negotiating a plan through there. So we don't really know where this is going to go from here. But what we do know is Putin and Prigozhin go back a long way and this is the first time we've seen Putin speak out publicly against Prigozhin as well and his group from there and we haven't really seen Prigozhin do the same the other way at least to Putin he's done it to the leaders below but not to Putin himself so very interesting to see what will actually happen from there and what will go on legends that's it today if you like support me links down below hopefully YouTube will stop effing me around but we don't know so have a great day have a great rest of your week I'll speak to you soon okay thank you bye bye